up into the little car and said, what do you really mean? Uh, but I, you know, whatever party we are on this, we, uh, we do try to be nonpartisan in these events. If we have a campaign event someday, we'll invite you over there. Uh, but the, uh, for this president, I hope, I hope that uh, we don't have Russian adults in the room who want to fail or anything of that nature. I think the idea here is uh, we want to try to work together on this. And, and we have a serious moment. You know, when President Bush got elected, uh, we had an education bill that a lot of people didn't like. Uh, but when it passed, I can remember Ted Kennedy and George Miller and others Democrats as well as Republicans travel around the country trying to at least give it a chance. Uh, this is a new president who is, finds himself in unbelievably difficult economic times and international affairs trying to do what's best. I would hope that everybody, not just Democrats, but everybody try to work with him and make it work. Uh, and that's basically so we we'll do that. But let me open it up. And again, comments or questions, and I'll try to be as fair as I can going around, ma'am. Question, I don't know if anybody heard the question was well, where's health care fit into all of this and when we're going to have universal health care with a single payer, single payer health care and uh, all that. Um, well, first thing, in the Recovery and Reinvestment Act, there are provisions there to help people maintain their health insurance should they lose it uh, in the situation. Uh, so there's a subsidy there to keep people on that. We right now, according to Elizabeth Warren out of Harvard, half of the bankruptcies in this country are caused by people who have a problem with their health care and ends up driving the family into bankruptcy. Of those, 75% had coverage. It wasn't that they didn't have health insurance, but they had coverage that either they ran out of or could no longer afford, or things of that basis. So it's a serious economic burden on the entire system, not just that particular family. So there's assistance in there for the many people who are on the edge of losing their health insurance there. We passed the S-CHIP bill, which is the children's uh, insurance pr uh, program. Uh, we increased from 4 million more children on that. Uh, one of the first things that we did since this president got in. So we're expanding on that. He has put on the, on the table the idea of health care and moving forward to do something about it. He's got a lot of pushback and resistance on it. If you read the paper, there are people who think, well, he's so busy with trying to get us out of this mess, we shouldn't be really looking at anything else. Uh, the fact of the matter is I think he puts it well. Is one of the things that put us into this situation is the high cost and increasing cost of health care. If we don't deal with it, we're just sort of mocking time here as the situation keeps on us. So he's got that on the agenda. He's trying to work with people. You know, he's, he's not looking at a single payer plan. He's, that's going to be one of the options out there. But I think he's thinking we're going to end up with some other uh, system that incorporates a lot. Of he wants to have one plan that would be sort of like a Medicare alternative to the private plans so that there'd be some competition there and drive those companies into a better situation. Others have other ideas. Ted Kennedy has a plan on the table. Max Bauck is in the Senate. John Dingell and, and Henry Waxman in the House. He's got it on there. He would like to come to some resolution by the end of this year to have a program that people can get behind and move forward. We'll see how well that works. He's, he's motivated and he's working on it. I think he's going to ignore the people that are pushing to not do anything right now. I think he's going to get enough momentum. The question is, can people come together around the concept that uh, people can get behind and move forward on. But very much on the agenda, I happen to agree with the premise of cost. The one thing that I don't think the Massachusetts program does is what it costs. So it's never going to be a perfect plan. It, it, you know, it's, a, it's an evidence it's an attempt. We've insured more people on it. Uh, but every year, you're going to find that it's still costing more. You're going to find more money from somewhere because they really have to deal with cost and quality uh, and delivery at the, the next level in Massachusetts. And any federal plan is going to have to do that at the outset. So thank you. Yes. Yeah, well, Sizable amount of money is going to transportation and the Recovery and Reinvestment Act. That's a job creator, you know, and uh, the, the numbers there are a really good return on your, your investment on that. It's gone down through the usual transportation formulas for rail, for roads, for bridges, and the number of that is so right to your, your uh, planning organizations regionally within the state, and so of course down through the states. Problems that we've had in the past is we have a lot of federal money for transportation residing around, say, the sixth instance, for instance, and it's always required a match. Now, this governor has inherited, well, from the last 16 years, a $19 billion deficit in Massachusetts transportation looking forward to the next decade. 
So one of the things we did was we waived the match requirement for some of that so the states can just get these projects up and start moving and put people to work. Uh, when can we expect the blue line to yes. uh, arrive? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm as anxious as you are, believe it. This is, uh, no, the problem with the blue line is, of course, uh -huh. projects have to be ready to go. Yeah. And we have been tussling between the federal uh, transportation group and the state transportation. When they needed a match, the state didn't have the match. You know, so we, that's been one of the drawbacks. There was a whole the no the stimulus money may, but I doubt it. But it may. But what will have an impact on that is the appropriations act, the annual spending bill that we do, that we get money in it every year to move this project forward. So we brought it all the way through the design phase. They're now at the phase where they're doing the environmental review. They're setting up, and they, by the end of spring, they tell me the hearings are necessary around that to approve it and moving forward on that basis. So every year, I've been getting federal money to do that to move it along. Tommy McGee, Steve Walsh, and the others down here have been very good at trying to push the state to spend money that they really don't have. And one of the very clever things they came up with was to bond for it and then to jump limbs project to the head of the bond list so that they've made the commitment to move the feds along so the feds couldn't have the excuse that, well, you guys in the state aren't gonna play. So it's moving on that part of the process. The incredible thing in Massachusetts is you can have a transportation issue, and as we well know with that, it takes you forever to get a shovel on the ground. Minnesota, a bridge went down, in 18 months it was all rebuilt. So I hope the Massachusetts legislature, I know Tommy and Stephen says we're working on it, have to break away and consolidate some of the procedural moves that people have to go through, whether it's environmental reviews, whether it's all of that. All those things were put in design to stop corruption because there was a problem in the 70s that we're all, we probably remember. So they put all the bid requirements and all the other hearing requirements in there, but it's a rather lengthy hodgepodge process now that hopefully the legislature will bring together and consolidate. And then with the clever work of Tommy and Steve and those others on the getting the state bonding thing and jumping at the top, as soon as we get these studies done, we can start moving forward. I don't think that it is going to solve every problem. We're going to have to work with Revere. If the people in the Revere, they're at least their leadership, isn't all that crazy about the idea. So we're going to work with them and, and convince them that it's a good thing for the whole region to move forward on that. But it's, we've gone through those stages. We had some delay with getting the state match, which overcome that, and now we're moving through the process.